Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is Barry Norman on behalf of ETX, and welcome to our class on Japanese candlesticks. <clears throat> now, most of you know ETX is a regulated provider, and I'm therefore required to give you a risk warning. So let me read that and get it out of the way. Trading in the financial markets may result in the loss of your deposited funds. Please ensure that you fully understand the risks or seek independent advice if necessary. ETX Capital provides an execution-only service, and therefore any market analysis, opinion, commentary, or other information which is provided during this webinar is for educational purposes only and is not intended to be a personal recommendation or construed as advice. All traders must understand that there is a high element of randomness to the markets, and therefore they will experience both winning and losing trades while following a trading strategy. Different traders following the same strategy will achieve different levels of performance. Past performance is not an indicator of future results. Now, those of you that are joining us through an internet promotion and don't know much about us, ETX is a fast growing financial services company and we are based in the city of London. We are authorized and regulated by the FCA, that's the Financial Conduct Authority, and our parent company, Monocore London, is a member firm of the London Stock Exchange. When you trade with ETX, you can either use our web-based trader, our ETX Trader Pro, or download our ETX MT4 uh, professional platform, whichever you would prefer. You can trade from both or either or neither, whichever is best for you. Now, we just recently launched a few months ago our new all-new ETX Trader Pro platform, um, which is the state of the art in online trading. <coughs> it's web based, no download required. Now, tonight's class is being recorded. And if you want to see a recorded version of this class in about 24 hours, just use the same link that you used to come to the class tonight, and you'll be able to access a recorded version. So tonight, we're going to be talking about a general introduction of the ABCs of Japanese candlesticks. Now, candlesticks are a very old form of charting that was developed by the Japanese rice traders. And it has become much more popular with the growth of online trading and computerized charting. When I started trading 40 years ago, very few people used candlesticks because they were time consuming because we didn't have computerized charts so you had to do all of your charting by hand so people didn't have the time to fill in the bodies and draw the you know the greens and the reds on their candlestick because it took a bit of time but today almost every charting service including the charts available on the etx pro trader Pro, and the mt4 platform are do this automatically for you so you can use them very easily and they've become with the growth of online training the most popular charting uh, format out there now each candlestick represents i'm sorry each candlestick represents all the movement within the time period or time frame that you've set your chart for so if you're using a one hour chart Everything that happened in that one hour is contained in that candlestick. If you're using a 15 minute chart, every 15 minutes, all that information is contained in that candlestick. If you're using a one day chart, you have one candlestick per day, and it gives you the open, the high, the low, and the close for that period. Now, to draw the candlestick, it's relatively easy. You draw a line across at the opening price, you draw a line across at the closing price. You put a dot at the highest price in that period and a dot at the lowest price in that period. You connect the dots to the lines and these are called wicks or shadows. And then you collect, you connect the lines together to form what's called the body. And this is called the body of the candle. This body is ultimately important in understanding candlesticks. Now, if you step down from the open to the close, that was a bearish time segment. So you therefore would fill in your candlestick 
with whatever bearish color you're using. Now today we use reds and greens on the whole. In the old days, my old days, if you did candlestick charting, you use black and white. The reason being is if it was a bullish period, you would just not fill in the candlestick, so that would leave you a white. And if it was a bearish time period, you'd use the side of your pencil and just fill it in, just you know, because all you had was your, your old graphite pencils. Today we use reds and greens, but you could use pink and orange, purple and orange, green. Whatever you decided, as long as you knew which was bullish and which was bearish, because it all depends on you. You're reading the chart. But one color needs to be bearish and one color needs to be bullish. Now, unfortunately, we're human beings, and too many of us are beginning traders that don't want to put the effort into learning or reading about what you're supposed to be doing, and you just assume that all too much red or lots of red means something is going down and lots of green means something's going up. But that's not the case with candlesticks. Japanese candlesticks are not really about the color of the candle. They're about the shape and the size of the body of the candle and its placement in the trend and what the preceding and the post candle did also. And a lot of cases, the pattern or the position of the candle has very little to do with the color. It has to do with the size of the body. So it's important to remember not to get yourself confused when you see too many reds and too many greens. So we have the upper and the lower can uh, shadows or wicks, and then we have the real body in the center. So what does the size and the shape of the candle tell you? Well, first, and the most basic of interpretations, is each candlestick tells you the story about the battle between the bulls and the bears in that time segment. So if we were looking at a one-hour candle, it's going to explain and tell you who or how that battle or that game proceeded in that one-hour period and who dominated. If it's a one-day candle, who dominated for the day? And there are six basic interpretations that we can apply to these candles. Okay. And they're pretty easy, but understanding who's winning the fight out there is all about what the markets are about. So the first candle and the second candles to, or, or shape and size of the candle or battle is, are relatively the same. They're just the opposite. So in the first candlestick, since we didn't color it in, it's white, it's bullish. Well, that tells us that's not just bullish because it's not white. What we see here is we see a long-bodied candle with fairly equal size wicks. That's telling us that the bulls not only dominated the session, that they had control most of the session. And they were able to pull that price up but they were not able to maintain the highest point, but it closed pretty close to the high. Candlestick number two is the exact opposite. The bears controlled the ball for most of the game. In number three, we see a very small, narrow candlestick. Now, narrow doesn't say, when we say small, doesn't tell you what it has to be. There is no mathematical formula. When you see a small body candle, it's telling you that nobody had control of the ball. In example number four, same thing. We see this small body candle. So at the end of this period or throughout the period, nobody can control. But we can see, and it doesn't matter whether it's black or red or, red or green or black or white, because it means that nobody really had ultimate control. But what we do see is at some point, the bears dominated for some reason. They got a real headstrong run, but they lost it. So whatever happened in that session that the bull, the bears started really running, couldn't hold on to it. The market didn't believe in it, and it ended up almost where it opened. So that tells you that the end of the session was almost bullish, but there was no difference in the price. So there was nobody who had ultimate control.
Number five is the exact reverse, where the bulls at some point had very had dominated, but lost that domination of that control. And number six, we have small body candles with very long wicks. That's telling you there was huge indecisiveness and everybody was pulling back and forth, back and forth, but nobody had ultimate control. So it's important not only to see the color, but to see the body and the shadows or the wicks. Now, once you've explored that story, and you should be looking at that chart every time you see a new candle going on it and understanding who, who's in control of that session. But then there are very important candles, candles that tell you something specific. And most of these candles have names. The first one we're going to look at is called the Marabuzo. Now, when you look at it, we see a black candle and a white candle, a red candle and a green candle, whichever way we want to look at it. But what do you see that's missing on the Marabuzu? There are no wicks. That tells us, number one, doesn't even have a little wick on the bottom and no wick on the top. That tells us from the beginning of that session, when we have the white or the green Marabuzu, from the beginning of that session to the very end of that session, and remember, the session only ends because of a time restriction, that the bulls were in ultimate control. They were running that entire session. The bears never were able to pull down that price one drop. And that session ended with the bulls still pulling in, you know, pulling forward. So if the time hadn't run out, the candle would have still kept growing. The opposite in the black or the red marabuzu tells us that the bears were ultimately in control. When we see this marabuzu appear in a trend, and it's important to see it, but a bullish Marabuzu candle means a continuation of the existing bullish trend or a reversal of the current downtrend. Sim similarly, a bearish Marabuzu signifies that the current bearish trend may intensify farther or the current trend may reverse. So we have to see where this candle appears in which trend it appears in. When you see it appear in the current trend that it's moving in, it intensifies that trend. If it appears in an opposite trending manner, it tells you that trend is most likely over. Then we go to the next one, which we call spinning top. Spinning tops have equal size shadows, or fairly equal size shadows, and they have small bodies. These are telling you there's huge market indecisiveness. Now, a lot of this depends on where they fall after or in, in a trend and what happened in the preceding candle. So even though the session opened and closed with little change, prices moved significantly higher and lower in the meantime. Neither buyers nor sellers could gain the upper hand, and the result was a standoff. After a long advance or a long white candlestick, a spinning top indicates weakness among the bulls and a potential change in an interruption of a trend. So again, after a long advance or a long white candle. So if we see the spinning top appear after a long white candle or a long green candle or after a long red candle or a long black candle, it's telling us that there's weakness among the bulls or the bears. Now, one of the most common, and also one of the most commonly talked about, is called the doji. Now, the doji appears as a cross. Okay. Now, a standard doji has an equal size wick above and below. And in the old days, the doji had to be an exact open and close were the same. But that's because in the old days, and I'm talking about 40 years ago before computerized camp, and especially before Forex trading and online trading, it was mostly used for stock trading. And so it just basically said a stock didn't move in value in that period. 
Well, that's quite a common first stock. Whereas as the development of Forex grew, the interpretation had to be slightly changed. And it's only because stocks trade in $1.22, $1.45, where currency trades four digits over to the right in a thousandth of a point. So a doji could be slightly different from the open and the close, especially in Forex, because you're using such small numbers. To get the euro to say at 1.233333 and not be at 1.233332 is very rare because Forex moves continuously. But when it moves at one pip, okay, so the the new doji or the doji of the last 10 years say simply says the interpretation is the upper and the lower wicks need to be relatively the same and the open and the close need to be virtually the same that allows us to have this little bit of gap in the doji and what this is telling us that nobody at all has any conviction of the markets and even the indecision and a tug of war between buyers and sellers isn't going on. It's more like everybody's sideline. Now we do have dojis that can have long upper and lower wicks. And these mean something when you're looking at the interpretation. But you have to always look at a doji in where it is in relationship to its previous candles and where it is in relationship to the trend. So a doji signals that buying pressure may be diminishing and that an uptrend be, could be coming near an end. Whereas the security can decline simply from lack of buyers. Continue buying pressure is required to sustain an uptrend. Therefore, a doji may be more significant after an uptrend or a long white candle. A doji is a candlestick where the open and closing price are the same. What's key in a doji is that neither the bulls nor the bears have gained control. But to apply a doji, a good trick is to look out for a doji near the edge of a price channel. Now, dojis are not uncommon. And as much as you think like the Marabuzu, which was the first sandalstick we looked at, sounded like it was unique because it's very rare, but it isn't. And also spinning tops happen quite often. And this is why we always have to, when we see them, is just notice them. But then we have to look at what they are in relationship to the trend and the previous and post candlesticks. Now we have all kinds of things and people have come up with all kinds of names. Now there are important candlesticks and secondary and third level candlesticks. There are actually 32 different candlestick patterns which we look for. Now, people have called these because the doji remembers the open and the close are the same. So you could have a long body going up or down. Okay. And that would have shown you that something happened in that trend, but it ended up with still undecisiveness. Okay. I personally put no value in what we call the dragonfly and the gravestone. I actually, when I see these on a doji, I put no value on the doji either. You know, you can get as detailed as you like. But, you know, there are some basic patterns that are important and others that appear. And if you want to really spend the time getting to know them and dealing with them and interpreting them, but you could spend a lot of time with them. But now they have a basic idea of what candles indicate with their bodies and wicks. Let's cut our teeth on some simple and uncomplicated candlestick patterns. Now, these are fairly common and quite likely to appear before you in a normal trading session. So knowing instantly what they mean and taking the proper trading decision immediately could make the difference between a winning and a losing trade. So as I mentioned earlier, positioning of a candlestick is very, very important. Okay, star position is a position that 
is the location of a candlestick in relationship to the next candle. It's one of those things that I pay no attention to. It said that it should be, it's in a star position because the first candlestick, the candlestick looks like it's le leaped up into the space. Okay. In essence, it can't because the open and the close have to be the same. So it's a candlestick that gaps up. But then we get really involved with what we call shooting stars and inverted hammers. Okay. And again, if you want to learn to master all of these and interpret all these, you have to become a candlestick expert. But there's no need to master all of these. Okay. It's knowing when to see a pattern and seeing the 16 primary ones and knowing what they're trying to tell you. Okay. I can't see, I personally never recognize a hammer. Okay. Here's a hammer. Here it is and actually a trading. What they have relationship, I have no idea. And do they work? I have no idea. Not because I haven't tried to use them. I just haven't found them valuable. I find other things that I'm looking for more important. And especially when you're trading Forex and CFDs that are moving so quickly, you could spend forever and realize you're evaluating a pattern that's long past and over. But I'm going to show you some quick ways to find these patterns and how to incorporate them into your trading very easily. Now, remember, there are all different types of candlesticks and formations. And it's important always to realize where they are falling in a trend. Now, one of my favorites and one that I depend on or I react to is called a harami. Now, harami in Japanese means pregnant. And it's exactly that when a new candlestick appears and is fully encompassed, and that is from the open to the close, from the wicks to the body, and all of that new candle is within the body of the previous candle, okay. then it is a harami. And that is a true harami. It doesn't matter whether the new candle is the opposite color or the same color. In the general interpretation, my rule of trading is it has to be the opposite color. It must be fully incorporated into the body. That means that shadow or the wick can't be one hair above the body or the from the previous candle. When a harami appears, and they do appear often, they are a strong signal. Now, because they do appear and there's open room for interpretation, a harami is one of the most common candlestick patterns you'll come across. So it's important to recognize it, to understand what it means and to understand its limitations. A harami is a two session reversal pattern. It's made up of two candlesticks and implies that the price is about to turn. It is indicated by a small body of the opposite color, completely contained by the body of the previous session. Now, it is not essential for the two candles to be opposite colors. I say it always has to be if you're going to spend any time looking at it. But this tends to give it a more reliable signal. Now, I'll be blunt with you. Harami doesn't always live up to its height. When it is touted as a reversal indicator, you may find yourself disappointed by its reliability. Okay. Now, no candlestick pattern is 100% reliable. Basically, a candlestick pattern is warning you about something, is alerting you to something. Okay. And just remember, it's more than the greens and the reds. Don't get stuck on greens and reds. Now, the chart we're looking at right up here that just popped up, I didn't make it up. Okay, I got it from somewhere, it might have been Forex Factory. So when we look at the what is called the type, Lonesome Cowboys, two for tangos and three for musketeers, these are just names that the author came up with these. Okay, I call them singles, doubles, and trios 
because the single candles are the ones we talked about originally, marabuza, spinning top, dojis, hammers, hanging man, inverted hammers, shooting stars. These are one candle patterns. A one candle pattern appears very, very often. It doesn't really tell you that much. Because it's, you know, it's just a freak of nature it can be. You need to see them and witness them, especially a doji or marabuzo. Okay, They're alerting you again. They're a low-level alert. When we get to the two candlestick pattern, which are the bullish engulfing and the bearish engulfing, or the bullish tweezers and the bearish tweezers, they're getting a little bit more important because this means two sessions had to come together to tell you what's going on. And then when you get to the triples, triples are much more reliable. Now, some of them are very weird and complicated, and therefore, I don't spend any time looking at them. Because, again, you can spend so much time trying to see them that you never see them and that you've missed everything that is on the whole session. But when we see three white soldiers and three black crows, they are quite, they, they appear quite often, and they are very reliable signals. So there are 16 basic candlestick patterns. And you can go to the internet and just look up candlesticks. And these are the basic candlestick shapes. They're all over. There's nothing I made up. There's nothing revolutionary about it. There's nothing secretive. These are the candlestick patterns that most people trade on. They happen the most often. And they're also the most reliable. Now, bullish engulfing and bearish engulfing are very important because you read about them and hear about them a lot. So it's important that you understand what they are. But they are warnings of a impending market reversal. And they're pretty reliable. Sometimes they're called flags and pennants. But what a bullish or bearish engulfing candlestick is, is in a downtrend, we would expect a red candlestick. When the next candlestick is of the opposite color or the opposite of the trend, in this case, a bullish engulfing, says exactly that. The bulls, the, this bullish candle engulfed the full previous candle. Okay, so the body of the candle, like circled up here, the new candle fully contain the old candlestick pattern. That means the bulls wiped out all the bearish movement and then went exceedingly be far behind beyond it. And when that appears in a downtrend, that downtrend is over. Okay. Then we have the bearish engulfing, which is just the reverse. Now we have a little weird one. When they appear, and they don't often because they're very restrictive definitions, and that's a bullish tweezer and a bearish tweezer. They look exactly like a pair of tweezers, either right side up or upside down. First, you're going to get in a downtrend, a bearish candle. The next candle will be a bullish candle of equal size as the previous candle with the same shadow. And that is a reversal pattern telling you that down, that downtrend is over and is moving into an uptrend. So we have the bearish and the bullish. If you use very restrict, restrictive definitions, just like I used, okay, you'll find they work quite often. Okay, Morning stars and evening stars are one of the ones that I told you, by the time you recognize them, everything's long over. They are very odd, they're very weird, they're very complicated. And to be honest with you, they don't work so well. Now, the important of the triples is the three white soldiers, three black crows. Now remember, white and black come from the old days of white candles and black candles. So technically we could call it three green soldiers and three red crows. These are when we have three candlesticks in a row of a particular color. In 
when you're looking at a downtrend and you get three consecutive green candles or three bearish bullish candles, that's telling you, number one, that that trend is over, but it's also reversed into an uptrend. Now, there are lots of strategies with these. Some people say you can use these to project the momentum. How Some people say that you, know, that you can calculate how big the three bodies were to offset the candle move, almost like how to calculate where they are. There's all types of interpretations you can use with these. But the basic rule is three opposite candles of the opposite trend tells you that trend is over and the new trend is beginning. But there are some very interesting strategies and some very interesting interpretations. And if you just go read in the internet, three black hosts, three white soldiers, you'll see that some of them actually have some validity. But they're very dependable reversal patterns. And most of it's because they comprise three candles. That means if you're looking at one hour candles, that means the traders have had ample time to make up their mind. Now, the three inside up and the three inside down, which is the opposite, again, are like the three evening stars and the three morning stars. Very complicated, very hard to see, very rarely actually happen. And the session could be long over before you found them. But now it's time to actually move into action. And each candle of a candlestick chart is just a reflection of market sentiment. It is not just a standard pattern, but the keen observation. And you can master the art of trading by looking at the charts without ever remembering the names of these patterns. So let me pop you up to some live charts here for a second. Okay, now, if we were to look at this candlestick chart, right off the bat, What can we see here? What do we see right here? What do we see here? Well, what do we see right here? Okay. We can see all these, but what is it really telling you? You can jump all over the place. And unfortunately, too many people do exactly that. Oh, look at that. I see this. Oh, there's red. I'm going to trade to go down. Well, you'd have lost your shirt. All this, I would have traded to go down. Again, if you wrote it out to here, you might have been all right. But this isn't what candlesticks are about. And as I told you, they can become, especially for a new trader, a little bit overbearing. And you say, how do I spend all of my time looking at this stuff and trying to figure it out? I can spend forever on one asset trying to find all this stuff. Well... Thanks to computers, things have gotten a little bit easier. Now, we're using the charts right now from TradingView. And if I just go over here to scripts, I'm sure, well, I know for a fact, but I can find a script up here that will identify my candlestick patterns. So I just click on it. And now all of a sudden, oh, I just clicked on it twice. So let's get rid of one of these. So all of a sudden, look at that. I see all this garbage all over my charts trying to tell me all the different candlestick patterns I had. Okay. Because I haven't set it up yet. But if we go over here and set it up a little bit, we can see we can decide what candlestick patterns are interesting to us, how we want them to note it on our charts and highlight it on the charts, and turn them off and turn them on so that we can have them easier to use. Now, most of you use the ETX charts right on our platform, which is perfectly fine because all the can all the patterns will be the same. One chart doesn't have something somebody else has. All the price movement, all the time segments, everything's the same. So what you could do is just use trading view in the background, watch when a pattern pops up there, and then put it on to your, you know, circle it on your ETX charts. But this is one way to find them without looking for them. Just one way. But you still have to know what's important, what they mean, what's what, you know, and get them on your 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 charts and your strategy that you're using. 
Another way is investing.com now. If you just go click on any of their assets, we'll put the candlestick patterns right on your charts and tell you exactly. And you can you can customize them and decide you want to fit every, you know, if you're using a 15 minute chart, a one hour chart, or what hour or what time frame you want to see your candlestick patterns in. And you can say you want to only see completed patterns, emerging patterns, bearish, and what level of reliability. And click on apply, and they'll appear right here on the charts. And as you can see, it tells there we have an inverted hammer, a bullish reversal signal, reliability low, and it occurred in the last. And then we could just transpose this onto your calendar. Okay. So this also is another way of doing it. Investing.com also offers a third way, which I use quite often, is you can sit up here and customize all the different assets you, that you like to trade and set up the patterns you like to see. And then it will tell you right now in emerging patterns, I have in Ripple Bitcoin, I have a deliberation bearish. It's a current, it just currently happened with the most current candle. And if I open, it, it's going to give me a full explanation. But then I can go right back over to my chart. So I'm not spending my time doing all the research. I've got a scanner who's now scanning the markets and just telling me these patterns when they're occurring. And then I can transfer them onto whatever charts I am using. So this is just another way to get those because candlesticks can be used in many ways. They're very easy to, to, to use to notify, to see or chart patterns or chart action. Here we had a perfectly beautiful double top. Okay. It's much easier to see with candlesticks. Here we have the formation of a head and shoulders. And it's easier to see these with a candle. Beautiful reversal pattern, broke the neckline, it came right back down, just textbook perfect. But it's very easy to spot these with candlesticks. It's very easy to spot swing highs and swing lows with candlesticks to draw your support and resistance lines on your charts. Okay, again here, we have all the different candlestick patterns and what they're giving us buy and sell signals. Let me get these other indicators off of here. And we can very easily identify swing high, swing lows, and support and resistance by just looking at our candles and extending them forward for our support and resistance. So there's many ways to use these candlesticks in your everyday trading once you have a handle on them. So let's go back over to the chart in my PowerPoint. And we'll wrap this class up pretty shortly, but let's go back and run through this again. So you can see that there are lots of things we can see, like running through this chart. We can start, in the, you know, we can start seeing everything that's happening when we're looking at the size of the candles, the shape of the candles, where those candles, and see how we we use the swing highs and swing lows to generate support and resistance levels and move them forward. So again, here we can tell a whole story out of an asset. Okay. And it takes time. It takes time to real recognize these, to understand these. But after you start using them on a regular basis, you'll find that you can add these into your trading system very very easily it's just getting your eyes familiarized with with you know recognizing like when you started to drive you were very nervous and you you know you wouldn't recognize what all the street signs were and what all the road signs were and you'd be very nervous you know after a while you know your eyes recognize a stop sign it recognizes a green light a red light you know you you can see try you know because you get used to spotting things And you'll find that candlesticks are a very, very reliable trading or charting system as well as a trading system. But you have to learn to use them properly in order to add them into your trading. Now, remember, each candlestick on a chart is a reflection of the market sentiment. Each candle on a chart may be saying something to you, but how do you listen to it? The answer to that lies in the size of the bodies 
of the candles and its wicks. Okay. So remember, it's important to pay attention to the length and the wicks. And then once you move on, you'll find that you can use these candlesticks and the size of the candlesticks to set your stop losses, to set your exit and entry points, to figure out buy and sell and transaction signals. So learning the classic chart and the classic candlestick patterns, first to recognize them immediately on any price chart. The chart patterns describe broad predictable forces that print through all time frames, and that's important, all time frames and offer outstanding trades. Candles provide added precision in the context of the chart pattern through all time times. Perfect patterns really appear in modern trading environments. Learn to execute comfortably in a debris-filled landscape, understanding how to correctly interpret and utilize Japanese candlestick patterns will help you navigate your decision through the murky waters. There is no single method to trade any pattern. It's getting to understand them and seeing them and recognizing what they're telling you. So always keep one eye on the clock. Time eventually turns against a pattern if price just sits there. Technical indicators start rolling over and the patterns can morph into an unpredictable mass of price bars. Choose entry levels wisely and exit immediately if the pattern deteriorates. Following proven and time-tested Japanese candlestick principles will always steer you to make good decisions. And on that note, I'm gonna say good night to everybody and thank you for joining us. Now, next month we will have a two-night two -night session in candlesticks where we'll go a little bit farther and start using them and adding them into our strategies. So thank you very much for supporting ETX. Thank you for joining us and we'll talk to you tomorrow. Tomorrow, I believe we have a class on uh, technical analysis, a whole new class on understanding technical analysis and incorporating the basics into your trading strategies. So have a good night now and thank you very much for joining us. Bye now.